Hello, Startup Vision. My name is Dominique Rodier. I am one of the co-founders of OSG, a new company developing so solutions for offshore. Hello, Dominique. Thank you so much for being with us on Startup Vision TV. So you have a PhD in naval architecture from uh, UC Berkeley. You worked for the main US uh, energy corporations and now your passion for the sea pushed you to have an impact on the oceans and the renewable energy. Um, what is the story of Osergy? So Osergy is a new company, but it's really the continuation, the last chapter or the next chapter of, of our life. And when I say, oh, is, you know, there's, there's three of us today that, that started this. Um, you know, I, when I did my PhD in Berkeley, I met Christian Sameli, who was, uh, you know, doing his PhD at the same time. We then moved to Houston, working for the big oil and gas companies. That was early, you know, in 2000s. And in 2003, we started, just him and I started a small company, Marine Innovation Technology. And we did a lot of consulting work as, as naval architect, really focusing on just concepts and hydrodynamics, uh, mostly. Eventually, that took us to, to what we liked, and which was, you know, energy. Uh, and we start developing the wind float foundation, which is which was one of the first floating wind turbines. We built a prototype and we partner with a company called Principal Power. And there we were really focusing on, on the wind float itself, on the device creating electricity, you know, creating wind in, in the ocean. Principal Power is, is, is an existing company. It's, it's doing great. It's one of the leaders in, in floating offshore wind. Um, but we exited uh, last year, him and I, and, and Alexia, our boat came, came with us because we felt that the next chapter had to focus not only on, on the technologies themselves, but on the holistic approach of the environment. And so even though we're still in, in the space, we're looking now more into the impact of, of floating wind and how, that, how can we minimize the environmental impact uh, of floating wind? How do we work with fishermen? How do we work you know, with, with uh, um, environmental uh, companies, how do we make sure that turbines don't kill birds, that, that fish live under those, those systems. So this is what OCG really is, is focused. So, you know, our, our life is really a chapter of many books that we're writing and, and we're in the, the next chapter. That's the continuation of uh, what we've done. So you say very strong and very clever words, have a mission first and then develop the solution. How, how do you do it? This is a luxury. I think you really have to, we, we look at it this way, is a lot of the times companies, you know, come up and they're doing some things and as they grow, they, they're faced with, you know, what's our mission? What are we doing? And, and, and you're trying to fit a mission to, to what you're doing. In our case, we're very lucky because when we exited Principal Power, we, we, we sat together and said, what do we want to do? What, you know, drives us? And you know, renewable energy and sustainability, especially related to, to, to the ocean, that's what drives us. And so when, when we sat down and said, well, instead of trying to, to come up with concepts and, and technologies, why don't we focus on the mission first? And then we can develop, we can, as, as naval architect, we can develop anything that floats in the ocean, sailboats, bridge tankers, you know, oil and gas platforms, floating wind turbines. And, but, you know, it was more about how do we make that difference? What it is that really drives us every day? And, and that's, that's our mission, you know, to develop sustainable offshore solution in, in a safe manner to, to preserve the environment and return the, the planet for our kids the way we, we got it or in better shape than, than what we got it from, from our parents. And, and do you think this kind of renewable energy can preserve our planet and more importantly, the oceans, which is core for the climate? Absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we all know that our planet is more than 80% water. You know, what's, what's interesting, though, is, you know, you, you know we've, we've been to the moon, uh, but we've never been to, to, to the deepest part of, of the oceans, this big unknown. Um, but it's, it's fascinating because we need, we need the ocean as a resource. And you see it in different cultures. Uh, that are more open to the oceans or, or that are more close to, to the ocean. For example, you know, in, in offshore wind, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't want the turbines on land because that takes the land. They want, they want them to, to be offshore. And, and that's, you know, that's where we worked in. When you look at Hawaii, they're happy with the turbines onshore. They don't want them offshore because they look at offshore. They, you know, they, they want, you know, because offshore is, is the resource. 
and so you, you, you know you have to look at how does the population live with 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 the ocean the, the relationship of, of those populations you, you know looking at at fishermen you know they're all you know obviously we need to work together but you know they look at the space as as their space you know and you know it's difficult for them to share but my um, question dominique is can we do it can you do we it? are doing it we are doing it we you know is obviously we, we we not only we we have to but but we are those projects more and more and and you said with wave energy you said with all those all, all those things offshore wind is is growing tremendously you know over 30 percent uh, increase yearly in terms of investments and, and projects and can you explain further the buoy concept to preserve or recreate marine life around uh, wind turbine fields so this is one of the technologies that, that we ended up feeling the, the a really strong need to develop because it doesn't exist today. And, and it's within, a, you know, it's, it's a small buoy, but it, it has, you know, tremendous amount of, of instruments on board. So we're talking about big data and it's being able to acquire not just mid-ocean wind wave data, but also bird data. How do they fly and, and fish? What happens under what, you know, under the, under the water? Um, how, how do we work? So how can we characterize what's there, first of all, and how can we implement it so it can grow? So, you know, looking at, you know, concept is to look at, at a wind farm as a protected area. How do we grow, you know, fish, you know, in an organic way? Uh, so not, you know, in, in a cage, but, you know, um, you, you know, just, just locally by providing food. And, and so there's these companies that, that do that, uh, the BioHuts from Ecocean, a French company, uh, are, are, are looking at that. And uh, this is a small cage where the, the, the fish kind of attach itself to and, and start growing. And so as, as we do that, you know, then, you know, there will be more fish around the wind, around the fish farm. And then we can work with fishermen and say, you know, why don't we, why don't you guys fish a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right? So, you know, the site is not blocked. Um, we're also looking at developing uh, experimental fishing techniques with, with fishermen. So obviously you can drag on the seabed because it's cables and anchors, but it's stuff that people can do. So, so that buoy is really about getting data. You know, data is, is understanding and that's how projects get, get, get done by really understanding what's, uh, what's there. So it's an exciting little project that we have. Yeah, that's very interesting. And last question, it's a personal question. I mean, you love the sea, I said it. You're a naval architect and you have a boat. You're in San Francisco. You go on the bay in San Francisco. So would you wish, would you love, would you like to be on the Vendée Globe right now? I know you're playing on your computer every day under, <laughs> to do the race, but... Yeah, uh, that that was one of my dreams uh, growing up to 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 be uh, to be a sailor. I think I can make more of a difference, you know, to to the world, you know, doing what I do than 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 just sailing around. But I follow, you know, I follow those guys. Um, since we talked, actually, I'm, I was uh, this morning. I was a hundred out of uh, nine, you know, nine hundred thousand. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know why I'm finding the time to to check my boat every, every you know, between meetings and uh, and things, but. You know the the virtual Vendée Globe is is you know it's a fascinating thing. So check yeah, it out. that's what I call passion, really. <laughs> Th thank you, Dominique, for sharing all those thoughts, and uh, we'll see you on the oceans. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you.